three, two, one. So yeah, we hear uh, in the other virus called capitalism. How about that? Us poor mamas are still poor with or without uh, manufactured, I mean, state virus. That said, this is a very serious time and us poor folks have to also be together. Poor People's Army, yes. So we're standing here with one of our powerful sisters in the movement of Poor Magazine, Homefulness, Decolonize Academy, Sister Junebug. Can you please tell listeners and viewers how this uh, coronavirus is impacting your familia? Um, well, it's society's response to the virus that's really impacting my family. Um, we are basically um, psychologically being coerced and conditioned in a way to where we're supposed to stay away from everyone and however for poor folks that actually works against us in a sense because interdependency is the only way we can actually survive and thrive and actually um, come together. Community is the foundation of social justice and peace. So if we don't have community, we don't have that foundation anymore. Um, we have to rely on each other more than ever. Um, right now, it's, it's scary times for poor people, for disabled people, for people who are dealing with homelessness. Um, it's put me in a situation where it's just me and my daughter and it's put us in a situation where I've had to make decisions um, just so I can make sure we have food and water in the home. I'm grateful for the poor fam, the poor nation. Um, it's on us, really, for us. Uh, we can't rely on the, the government to really come to us to really help us at this point. Um, everywhere you turn around, there's more doors being closed on people. There's a few places that are still offering um, some type of bag food. St. Anthony's is still um, operating off with bag food. They'll give you a meal, a water, and a fruit. Glide is completely shut down. Glide is not even offering that at all. Um, there's one health center on Polk Street that's actually in operation. They still give you a hot cup of coffee, a bag of food, and they're committed to continue doing this Monday through Friday every morning. And they are trying to keep people coming in to keep it open so the funding can keep coming. I thought it was interesting when this happened that all the federally funded programs got closed down. So it was like, ah, oh, it's our excuse to not serve the social services network. So then we're caught in the net and fed. <laughs> right. um, so it really is um, having to think outside the box. Um, poor, Parent Voices, for instance, did a food bank in the parking lot. And um, that was even people had issues with that. And so, y you know, I went to St. Anthony's today to donate clothes. They won't even accept the clothes. Luckily, I found another building to take some clothes for children. Um, we, we really have to constantly. And as poor folks do, we already think off the grid, you know? Oh. So right now is the call to even think more and more and more and more off the grid because it's real, we're all each other's problem and we're all each other's solution. And I wish we could say spatial awareness versus spatial, uh, versus social distancing. Social distancing creates a psychological thing where we see each other as opposition and competition right. and psychologically fight each other and beat each other's asses over a roll of toilet paper right. and Safeway slave way. So I'm just saying that, you know, my, my survival depends on my community. It, it doesn't depend on whether the government closes or opens the door at this point because that's what we're facing. Um, rich people have already stocked up. Rich people got fucking rain collectors in their garages. <laughs> you know, poor folks, we live check to check. We live based on, you know, what we can, within our means, what we can afford that day, what we can get our hands on. Um, I'm a food pirate. I'm out in these streets constantly trying to figure out what I can bring back to the house. Um, I just, right now, it's, I just feel like this is given, I think there's a line, a fine line between cautiousness and ridiculousness. Yeah. So where do we find that? Right. And then the other thing is that I feel like this has given the government so much more power in a sense. Fear forces people to give up their civil liberties. Oh. We need to take a look at that. Um, and I just say that people just don't stop critically thinking, keep your emotional intelligence up, um, stress is real, at the same time, there's got to be some kind of level of, um, I guess, people, you know, your faith, 
you know, some oh. kind of belief um, outside of this. So what I mean by that is around us, the material world is collapsing. How do we keep our spiritual world intact and strong? And that's really all of us coming together and not being afraid of each other. Oh, um, and that's a big thing, too. Um, I know that there's a lot of critiques, for instance, about Che Guevara, but as a doctor, he wasn't afraid to get down and dirty with the people. I just don't want people to, you know, look at each other as the enemy. And specifically in the Asian community, I want to say that my daughter witnessed something at her school oh. that uh, the older children were telling the other children of Asian descent that, oh, you have the corona virus and so um, my daughter said to me well those children have no idea what they're talking about and so clearly my daughter had the capacity to see through the ignorance the bullshit and the racism that it's perpetuating um, however that doesn't mean every child will see that and er even every adult um, where you know I know of somebody right now who lives in a building who says because a certain percentage of their elders that live in their building are of Asian descent um, everybody in that building is now mandated coronavirus tested um, so mandatory is, how do you say, the, the no choice and yeah. people still want to exercise a choice. I read something about that ship where people are on, some people are refusing the test.